Workers at Japan's damaged nuclear plant have started a delicate and risky operation on Monday. They're removing fuel rods from a reactor building at Fukushima Daiichi. It's the first step in what's expected to be a decades-long process to decommission the facility. Tokyo Electric Power Company workers have to remove the more than 1,500 fuel rod assemblies from the reactor 4 building. The rods are currently stored in a pool. Most of them are used extremely hot and highly radioactive. The March 2011 earthquake and tsunami triggered a hydrogen explosion that damaged the reactor 4 building. Workers are using a crane attached to a specially built structure to remove the rods. TEPCO officials say it will take more than a year to complete the operation. The workers will then have to remove fuel rods from three other reactor buildings. Residents of Fukushima have mixed feelings about the fuel rod removal. The project is a positive step in the decommissioning process, but it could also put local people at risk. A 64-year-old man who operates a dry cleaning business near the plant welcomes the move. This is the first step in the decommissioning process. People here have high hopes that things will slowly return to normal and we can go back to our old lives. But some locals are expressing concern over possible safety problems with the delicate removal process. I am worried about whether it will go smoothly because of all the debris. What I am most anxious about is what will happen if the removal operation fails in some catastrophic way. TEPCO engineers spent months preparing for this operation. NHK World's Noriko Okada shows us how crews will be carrying out the work. This is an image of the number four reactor building. The fuel assemblies sit in a pool of water that keeps them cool and prevents radioactive particles from escaping. The tank is about 20 meters above the ground level. TEPCO engineers want to remove the fuel as soon as possible since the building was damaged by a hydrogen explosion. Officials say the building is strong enough to sustain an earthquake, equivalent to the one on March 11th but they admit that the spent fuel need to be moved to a more secure place. TEPCO workers will use a crane to lift the fuel assemblies from their rocks and place them in the radiation-proof containers. One container can hold 22 units. The work must be done underwater to minimize release of radioactive particles. The workers will then lift the container out of the pool to a maximum height of 30 meters and lower them to the ground. The workers will then move the containers to a storage facility 100 meters away from the reactor building and put the fuel assemblies back into water. The officials say one process of the removal could take one week. The company officials say the workers have conducted the operation more than 1,000 times before the accident. But there are differences between this time and previous operations. A hydrogen explosion caused debris to scatter around the building, including the fuel world pool. Workers had to clean them up before the operation. They have finished removing relatively large pieces of debris. But nuclear experts are concerned. There could be fragments of debris stuck between the fuel assemblies and their holding racks. That could force workers to halt the operation. It could lead to serious complications. Another concern is the high radiation level at the site. Workers can only stay inside the building for short periods of time. Six teams of workers operate the crane to move the assemblies to the container. Each team consists of six skilled workers. Each team can only work for two hours a day. They rotate to keep the operation moving while minimizing radiation exposure. TEPCO officials say the entire decommissioning process could take up to 40 years Protecting and training enough skilled workers to push forward with this operation will be a major challenge. Noriko Okada, NHK World.
Well, the, the Fukushima workers took painstaking care on the first day of moving fuel rods. They spent more than three hours on Monday maneuvering four assemblies of unused fuel rods around inside the pool. They raised the materials at a speed of just one centimeter per second to avoid any damage. And they kept watch on the process with underwater cameras. The workers plan to spend all day Tuesday placing 18 more fuel assemblies into an underwater container. Then they'll hoist the container out of the pool. A delicate, dangerous operation begins at reactor number four of the Fukushima nuclear plant. This remote-controlled crane is tasked with removing some of the 400 tons of spent nuclear fuel from the crippled complex. The unprecedented process is fraught with risk. The fuel rods are brittle. If they break or become exposed to air, huge amounts of highly radioactive gas could escape into the atmosphere. We hope that this process will be conducted in a manner that will not disturb local residents and that the removal will be done on schedule, properly and safely. There are about 50 to 70 fuel rods stored inside an assembly. It will take roughly a week to move 22 assemblies to a more stable pool that will keep the fuel cool. With more than 1,500 fuel assemblies requiring removal, this is a year-long operation. I would assume that the electric company, they have serious evacuation plans, but they're not made public, so as not to raise the fear. But they must have very serious evacuation plans in case the worst happens in that, in that swimming pool. Uh, but the workers, one must give them high respect that they're going there, and they know how dangerous that is. The earthquake and tsunami of March 2011 badly damaged all four reactors at Fukushima, but Unit 4 avoided a meltdown. The Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO, says the current experience will help it deal with the other three reactors, where radiation levels are much higher because of core meltdowns. TEPCO has continued to face criticism for its handling of the nuclear crisis, and public trust is low that it will safely decommission the stricken plants, a process that could last decades. Joanna Blundell, Al Jazeera. The operating company at the stricken Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan has begun the risky but crucial task of removing radioactive fuel rods from one of the four reactors. In a process due to take over a year, more than 1,500 tubes must be lifted out of a storage pool. A key question is whether the fuel rods were damaged during the disaster and may leak during removal. Unit 4 of the plant was offline at the time of the earthquake and tsunami in 2011. Its core didn't melt down as the other three did, but hydrogen explosions have weakened the structure. The first stage will see 22 of the four and a half meter long tubes removed over two days and placed in a common pool with a cooling system. The casks must remain watertight during the operation and have no contact with air. An American expert taken on by the operator says he's confident TEPCO will do a good job. But several other engineers warn that any errors could see sudden leaks of radioactive material. Meanwhile, reports say TEPCO is looking to shed a thousand jobs. Residents of Fukushima have mixed feelings about the fuel rod removal. The project is a positive step in decommissioning in the decommissioning process, but it could also put local people at risk. A 64-year-old man who operates a dry cleaning business near the plant welcomes the move. This is the first step in the decommissioning process. People here have high hopes that things will slowly return to normal and we can go back to our old lives. But some locals are expressing concern over possible safety problems with the delicate removal process. I am worried about whether it will go smoothly because of all the debris. What I am most anxious about is what will happen if the removal operation fails in some catastrophic way.
Members of Japan's ruling party are defending a bill to give the government sweeping powers to keep secrets. But some opposition lawmakers want to make sure state secrets aren't classified arbitrarily. The leaders of the ruling coalition hope to pass the bill through the lower house this week. They want support from as many opposition members as possible. The leaders say government officials will report yearly to the Diet and a government panel of experts on designation and declassification of secrets. It's my hope that many people will participate in the debate. I'd like everyone to cooperate so we can enact this bill. The heads of the opposition Japan Restoration Party say the government should set up an independent panel to check whether decisions to classify certain information are valid. They're also asking that all state secrets be declassified after 30 years. The leaders of the opposition Your Party want the bill revised to have the cabinet manage all sensitive information. Leaders of the largest opposition Democratic Party say lower house members should not vote on the bill this week due to a lack of deliberations. Farmers are showing an interest in a system that can help stabilize their income. It involves installing solar power panels on their land and selling the electricity they generate. In this next report, we meet a man who's at the forefront of this movement. NHK World's Noriyuki Sakai reports. The city of Tsukuba lies in Ibaraki Prefecture, about 60 kilometers north of Tokyo. This is where the farmer has installed the solar panels. Altogether, there are 580, enough to generate electricity for 15 homes. Ken Matsuoka set up the system. Until the spring of this year, he worked as an engineer researching and developing electronic parts. But he had become interested in farming. So he left his company and started up this farm along with the alternative power facility. The system is generating power at almost full capacity. Combined farming and solar power generation will become quite common. They complement each other as they both are related to nature, sun and land. Matsuoka found farmland left idle due to the aging of farmers and lack of their successors. He bought idle farmland at a low price and started growing vegetables and installing solar panels. Setting up the power system cost him about $150,000. But by selling electricity to power companies, he said he expects to make a profit of about $15,000 a year. It's difficult to stay in business just by farming. I hope to augment my income by selling electricity. Matsuoka took full advantage of his engineering know-how. He can alter the angles of the panels. This enables him to adjust the levels of light depending on the season, the weather, and what he's going. He made wide spaces between the panels. This reduces the amount of shade by up to 30%. This time-adjusted footage shows that equal amounts of light reach the entire field without creating large shadows. Six months have passed since Matsuoka began farming. He has grown soybeans, green peppers, and 13 other kinds of vegetables. I'm confident that I can grow almost any kind of vegetable. Researchers and other farmers are showing an interest in Matsuoka's system. It can be used in all kinds of places, like grazing land. 
It offers great potential for improving farming and much else. Through trial and error, I will introduce many new ideas to improve farming based on the system. Matsuoka says he will upgrade the facility so he can use it as a business model for solar shelling. This will enable him to work with manufacturers and make his systems available to customers in many places. Noriyuki Sakai, NHK World. We end tonight with a mystery from the deep. Scientists on the West Coast are at a loss to explain what is killing sea stars, also known as starfish. Ben Tracy says in some places, 95% of the starfish population has died. Along these edges here, there would have been sea stars, orange and purple sea stars at low tide. Marine biologist Pete Ramondi showed us the tide pools along California's Monterey Bay. Thousands of bright sea stars usually line these shores. In less than two months, they've vanished. How big of a mystery is this as to what's going on here? It's immense. I mean, that's probably, from a scientific point of view, one of the most intriguing things is we have no obvious culprit. His University of California Santa Cruz research team is finding six sea stars underwater, their limbs falling off, their bodies disintegrating. How quickly does it go from healthy sea star to nothing? A sea stars can go from perfectly healthy to completely decomposed overnight. This time-lapse video shows a sea star infected with white lesions. One by one, it loses each of its arms. This happened in just seven hours. This wasting disease is typically caused by bacteria. It often happens during El Nino years when ocean temperatures warm and bacteria grows more quickly. But there is no El Nino now, and the disease is more widespread than ever, stretching from Alaska to Southern California. This was a healthy sea star population last year near Vancouver, Canada. This is what it looks like now. We've never seen it like this, never. It's changing the ecosystem on the coast because sea stars eat these black shelled mussels. So these mussels are just going to take over because nothing's eating them anymore. That's right. Scientists say they don't know how much worse this die off will get and that it could be generations before these shores are once again painted purple and orange. Ben Tracy, CBS News, Santa Cruz, California.